After spending his childhood in India, a young British explorer, James Brooke, yearns for adventure and a life beyond his English upbringing. James is the uh, charismatic, interesting, exciting, romantic, good-looking, socially acceptable man and quite a wealthy background too. He is determined to do something extraordinary with his life. He wanted to go and do this great thing somewhere in the east of his childhood. So I think he was always driven by this need for greatness, this need for purpose, to, to have some great achievement to his name. James sets his sights on the exotic Far East. James Brooke had read about Borneo before because he'd read this book, Eastern Seas, by George Windsor Earl, uh, which talked about the potential, the richness of Borneo. After a stop in Singapore, James lands in a place called Sarawak in the island of Borneo. He brings with him a message for the Sultan of Brunei from the British governor in Singapore. In a town called Kuching, he encounters a Brunei emissary, Raja Muda Hashim. That was the first contact between Muda Hashim and, and, and James Brooke. And Muda Hashim liked him. James becomes aware of the growing unrest in upriver Sarawak. There, the Malay and Bidayu communities are rebelling against Brunei rule. I think in those days, Brunei rule in this part of Borneo was quite nominal. So there was no protection given by this government uh, of Brunei to the local inhabitants. But the Brunei governor was requiring that they pay heavy taxes, that they had forced labor to mine the antimony. To make things worse, the Sarawak governor from Brunei, Indra Makota, is considered a cruel and selfish leader who treats the inhabitants of Kuching unfairly. Brunei was not happy with this rebellion, so they stand. Pengira Muda Hashim was a friendly, nice man, hoping that he would be able to, you know, talk to the rebels to lay down their arms. Raja Muda Hashim is desperate to end the rebellion and pleads with James Brooke for assistance. So Raja Muda Hashim had made a promise, a gentleman's agreement, shall we say, that if he defeated the rebels, he would be given the political, the international political sovereignty of this region. I think he began to see his destiny unfolding before him at that point. He was looking for some new project to devote himself to. And so helping some ailing Malay state like Brunei to recapture its ancient glory was something that appealed to the romantic side of him too. So he was someone seeking purpose, seeking meaning in his life, seeking greatness, surely, uh, and Sarawak is where he found it. Tempted by the offer, James agrees to assist Brunei in quelling this rebellion. With the firepower of his trusted vessel, the Royalist, James attacks the rebels and drives them off from the fort therein. One of the rebel leaders, Datu Patingi Ali, surrenders to James. But when he personally meets the rebels, James is shocked by what he learns. The Datu Patingi explained that they had been under this terrible government of Brunei, that his family had been taken off as slaves in punishment, his property had been confiscated. James believes he is now in the position to uphold justice for the community. He offers his assistance to the Malay chiefs. Brunei wanted to execute them all. James said, I'll save your lives, I'll speak to the Sultan and make sure that you save your lives, if you support me. James Brooke used his newfound authority in this region to assert that he wasn't going to execute them. And more than that, he was going to return their property and their families to them. And more than that, he was going to make them a part of the government. The lands are sparse with scattered tribes and many of the communities have problems of their own. In order to establish himself as a legitimate ruler of Sarawak, James needs to provide what the Brunei Kingdom did not protection. 
and one of the Dayak communities that needs protection is the Bidayu. The Bidayu were saying there are these terrible sea Dayaks. They came from the sea. They came up river, so they came out of one river and up river, but the Bidayu understood them to be coming from the sea. They're pirates and they come in, they raid us, they take all our heads and they carry off our women and children. And so James Brook thinks this is a terrible evil. This is a terrible evil. I will protect you from this. These long-standing conflicts between communities in Sarawak have been going on for generations. Addressing this problem is one of James's biggest challenges. Soon, he gets to work. He heads to the interior of Sarawak, to a region called Skrang, to confront the Iban community. He secures the release of 700 women and children, slaves, and restores them to Bumbratak, which was the ancestral mountain of this Bidayu community. And so that Bidayu community began to see him as a protector who could not only protect them, but could restore wrongs that have been committed in recent history. So what happens in a lawless situation is when someone comes in and looks like being a neutral umpire, they get the job. They get credibility because they can solve problems that the locals can't solve themselves. He said, I now have a sacred duty to perform to the people of Sarawak, for I am, in the strictest sense, their only protector. As James is accepted by more local communities as their leader, he wants to claim his reward from the Brunei emissary, Raja Muda Hashim. He knew that for international legitimacy, he needed these pieces of paper to say, the Sultan of Brunei, which was a recognized state of some form by the Europeans, had given me this piece of paper. But the emissary does not regard James's request seriously. I think he probably thought that James would be happy being paid off at the end, so being given some antimony, something he can trade and carry on his way. And James Brooke, of course, saw this as his manifest destiny and wasn't going anywhere very quick. Dissatisfied with Raja Muda Hashim's broken promise, James takes action to claim what he believes to be rightfully his. And so he popped royalist in front of the hall of audience and he said, honor your promise or I'll fire guns at you. One day. 